Okay, so we are going to um, look at uh, essential sciences for therapeutic massage, uh, chapter two uh, with Gary, who just flopped against the screen. Um, chapter two is a unique chapter in a science book, um, and it's going to help you uh, as a student of massage therapy, kind of put uh, the big picture together so that you can kind of maybe help be motivated to study some of the details as we go on in the textbook. So let's go through my normal strange uh, screen sharing process. Um, and, you know, I can never just get it the first time. And there we go. So this is chapter two, Mechanisms of Health and Disease. Now what I've done for the Essential Science course is for every chapter, I've gone through and pre-sorted uh, um, uh, YouTube videos that uh, will give you a different perspective on the content. And I also have found some overarching um, sites that have playlists that I think are very good and expanding your information. It's, it's really important to hear things multiple times in multiple ways using a multiple different voices. It's part of that novel repetition idea for learning. And for the science part of your massage therapy education, uh, YouTube can be an excellent resource for that. So that'll be posted on Canvas for you. And what you will want to do is when you get ready to, to uh, study a chapter, you're going to want to notice uh, the links the YouTube links that are available. And there's different ways you can use those. Um, you can play them first. Uh, used a lot of introductory and overview. Uh, I like to use um, teachers that are presenting to kids. It boils down the concepts really good. And then you can read through the chapter uh, and combine that with the online course, and that will really give you a lot of novel repetition for this. Uh, and it's uh, not necessarily about massage. What the textbook will do is relate this to massage for you. Um, also found a course, uh, a couple of links for medical terminology, which uh, is uh, uh, something that we're going to come up with in another chapter here pretty soon. So um, make use of those videos. Our science studies are uh, the, the didactics, the uh, textbook factual understanding. Um, a lot of that is in our course here at Health Mitchell Center. It's about you. Uh, being guided by us, but about you um, absorbing this information, and uh, then we'll bring it to life for you in the classroom. So there's quite a few videos that uh, you can expand out here with the mechanisms of health and disease, and again, that's on you. Um, remember, we're putting all this together so that you can uh, have the foundation to uh, launch yourself into a career as an excellent massage therapist and to pass the MBLEX exam. So more, the more repetition you have, the more different sources you use, uh, the better uh, retention you're gonna have on information and uh, the more overarching knowledge you will build up so that you can use critical thinking uh, when you're answering those questions as well. So this is about health and disease. And uh, of course, we are trying to uh, help people 
have a higher quality of life with massage therapy. So uh, we're supportive of health. And if somebody does have a pathology uh, of some type of disease, then how can we help the quality of their life be better, even though we might not be specifically targeting that condition? So um, talking about homeostasis, um, what are feedback loops, um, biological rhythms, you know, what's, how do we do that inside our own body? And then a lot about pain, because research has shown that this is a place that massage therapy can really be a benefit um, and managing pain. And then what, what is well-being? And then what is our life cycle, you know, from birth to death? Um, what does that have to do uh, with our decision making and how we might work with a client? Here's all your chapter objectives. Here are your key terms. Remember, we went over this in more depth as we looked at chapter one. And you need to, to look at these terms. You need to pronounce these terms um, and get used to using this language. Here is our learning how to learn feature. And in this one, we're looking at some principles of massage. We've got our generalized outcomes. This is what people are expecting to have as a benefit. And we also have some ideas about how we approach the massage and some principles here. Like we start out general, then we might narrow down on a particular area, and then we generalize again. We start the surface, move deeper into the tissue, and then come back out again. So th this is linking uh, your fundamentals of therapeutic massage studies here as well. Homeostasis is self-regulation, and it is uh, part of how we have adaptive capacity. And then that also feeds into something called resilience. How, how can we bounce back? So um, the model that I want you to become familiar with is salutogenesis. And I've got a couple of YouTube links um, for you to take a more in-depth look into this. But it's moving towards health instead of trying to reverse pathology. Um, so how do we uh, maintain homeostasis? How do we adapt? Um, how much stress load, physical load can we handle before um, we have to renew and restore ourselves? And we have to really stop and think about that with massage because it is demanding adapt adaptation. And so it becomes important for us to realize just how much the person can adapt at that time um, and how their adaptation or their adaptive capacity might be limited in general. Um, I know uh, as I am in my more mature years, my stamina is not quite as good as it was 20 years ago. And um, I noticed that if I um, scratch myself out in the garden, it takes a little longer to heal than it did when I was a child. Uh, so um, we just have to kind of take the client's history, pull that all together, look at what the demands are for them. A couple of days ago here in Michigan, it was very, very hot hot and humid, and um, I didn't have access to my air conditioning. And so since I had not challenged my body to adapt to heat changes, I had used climate control, um, then I found it very hard uh, to um, be comfortable in that heat. 
So that's another example of adaptive capacity. So we're going to go through here and look at some categories of care and how much adaptive capacity is required for that. So if we're looking at um, actually causing some sort of reversal, that's that therapeutic change, that's a lot of adaptive capacity required to do that. Um, and if there's already an injury or an illness, the adaptive capacity is stressed. Condition management is where there, there is something, some situation that is influencing um, the person's physiology and they, they can't do a big reversal on it right now. Um, this could be a chronic condition like an autoimmune condition or it could be a job that they can't leave right now and it's causing them to accumulate maybe some muscle skeletal strain. But um, we can still help. We just have to think about the limits in the adaptive capacity and how much we can expect. So what's helpful here is um, not trying to fix it, but trying to keep things from progressing to a, a more debilitating type of a condition. And in all of these situations, it's important, it, it's actually more important to know what not to do than it is to try to figure out an exact recipe of what to do for something. And we, this is an area here where we can get into problems if we try to be too aggressive with what we're doing, but it's also where massage is most beneficial too. Then we have restorative care, which is like recharging the battery and palliative care. And with palliative care, we want to minimize demand on the adaptive capacity and actually uh, support um, a soothing more of a soothing idea. Now that doesn't mean that the massage is real gentle and all that, but it means that we're not trying to uh, reverse anything or we're not trying to um, uh, make sure that the person is gonna follow a lot of self-care exercises or any of that right now. It's just, what can we do to soothe the situation right now? We also want to take a look at um, the ideas of homeostasis in other cultural traditions. And so there's some overview to that. And we talk a little bit about uh, the Asian um, five element theory um, using metaphor and the external world to describe and understand our internal functionings. Uh, and same with Ayurveda uh, and how the, the language is uh, describing some physiological mechanisms. It may appear different to us because we don't necessarily speak that language. Um, and there is also in some of these cultural traditions an overlap into the whole body, mind, spirit idea uh, that we're just starting to describe as the biocycle social approach model. So he here is an example of the chakra system and um, it's uh, often um, found in conjunction with some massage therapy practices. Uh, meditative practices, that sort of thing. And you can start to uh, take a look at that just as another way of thinking through and understanding um, that there's multiple ways to explain um, how our bodies function. Practical application with a little bit of myofascial stretching there. Um, and again, reviewing what we have learned. As we progress then, we're gonna talk about the communication system using feedback loops. So um, this is important that you get a grasp on this. So there's sensory 
something is sensing, something is listening externally and internally in our bodies. And then it detects something that the body then, the, the central, it transfers through the somatic nervous system, uh, or the peripheral nervous system, gets into the central nervous system where it's interpreted. And then there, there is a decision about whether there needs to be some sort of change, something done, uh, raise blood pressure, lower blood pressure, pull, pull away from a stimulus. Then that comes back out through our motor system. So here's a diagram on what that is. So when we do massage, that's what we do. We, we, we apply a mechanical force to the client's body, plus we're in the room. And so that is a sensory stimulus that their body processes. And then depending on how that goes through all that processing on uh, if it's uh, accepted or if it's ignored or if it, there's a demand for change there, or whatever that is, then the body responds to that with uh, some sort of motor change or some sort of endocrine change, autonomic nervous system change, which usually then is reflected in the results we want. So we're always working around uh, this idea of feedback loop. Also within this idea of our generalized health and well-being is we do have biological rhythms and understanding how that might influence your client on any given day. Um, time change, for example, with daylight saving times of sin, sometimes that can really unsettle somebody or if their sleep cycle has been disrupted. Um, so, you know, this is another self-regulatory um, mechanism that we have that's starting to get a little bit more appreciation for how it, it does influence. It, does infl it influences when pe how people heal and um, what, when's the best time of the day for them to be active and uh, mentally active as opposed to uh, what's the best time of day for them to be physically active. So always read through your practical applications. Uh, it, it'll take this into the idea of what's going on with massage for you. And then here's what happens when the system breaks down. Um, and we are now starting to move away from health and well-being. So, um, We've got a lot of language here to learn. And then we want to stop and think about how is massage therapy going to be part of helping that person respond and cope to um, a pathological situation. Now, those videos I talked about, um, YouTube videos, there's a whole section on individual pathologies, lots of ones that you can connect and just start to build your internal library of, of what the various disease conditions are. There's also a series of links on um, pharmacology, which is a common way to treat pathologies, because we need that information to do cr critical thinking so that we can figure out how to apply massage beneficially and safely and or make referrals. So um, this is giving you a general overview with this. And once we get into the individual body systems, there's also a uh, segment at the end of each of those um, with uh, common pathologies and indications and contraindications. And in the back of your textbook, there is um, a, uh, like a mini pathology book um, and it 
covers the common ones that you likely are going to encounter on the MBLEX exam. So I suggest that you just uh, use the YouTube links. Um, I tried to make sure that they're fairly short and that you just click on one or two and just listen to it and keep re going through that list. And over time, you will build some internal, uh, an internal library um, that you can then reference and use for your decision making. But there is a language that goes with this. And so here you go. You're going to have to know how to speak these words and use these words intelligently. And there are risk factors that predispose us um, to certain types of conditions. Um, I'm not, I, I know my sister also has developed glaucoma and my father died quite young of a cardiovascular um, event. And you know, when I had the open heart surgery for a clogged left main artery, uh, coronary artery, the main risk factor that they finally came to on that was a genetic predisposition. So take time and go through all of this, get this language down. And then when we're looking at these risk factors, take a look at this for yourself. Uh, where are your physiological strengths and weaknesses? What what does the, your genetic history have to teach you on this? Um, and there's actually a, a proficiency exercise here where you can, um, or an activity here where you can start to uh, consolidate that information. Because these are areas where a person would intervene. Um, if it was diabetes, for example, it's amazing how much lifestyle and diet can make a difference. So, um, and then also with our genetics, we have different uh, genetic predisposition to a body type, a body style, and that changes and affects metabolism and um, tendency to accumulate fat or not. And uh, what are, you know, are we prone to being um, like a, a marathon runner or a sprinter? What sport are we going to be at, good at? It's amazing how much our genetics do influence uh, how we are going to um, respond during life as best we can. So, um, and then this is always lovely. This, these are our pathogenic organ, uh, organisms. And I'm going to tell you, we're symbiotic. We got <laughs> lots of bacteria and, and they call it the bionome. And we're learning more and more and more about how important a good bionome balance is in the gut and, and on our skin. And um, we have uh, fungus plants that live on us and so uh, do stuff take a look at that um, so this is talking about various types of common pathological conditions uh, getting a general idea about how cancer works um, we can be early detection we can watch for signs of cancer whether it's on the skin which we can really help with, or how we um, can listen to our clients and start to see patterns that might indicate that there's some disruption within a visceral system. Um, and early referral is everything on this. And understanding inflammation. I've got a couple of YouTube clips on that as well. And there are many, many, many pathological conditions. Uh, the inflammatory response is a big part of how we try to deal with that, whether it's an, uh, an acute injury or if we've got a, a viral invasion. Um, so be very uh, aware and take time 
to understand the inflammatory response. You can always look up more YouTube videos than what I put out there for you too. So, um, and know the signs of inflammation and understand the difference between productive and non-productive inflammation. Chronic inflammation is what's the underlying cause of a lot of chronic illness. So here's our little review of what we've learned. Remember, these are 15-minute learning segments. And this is just an initial chapter overview and some directions on how to be your own best teacher with this. Um, and there's Luke, one of your teachers, under a uh, proficiency exercise, practical application, practical application exercise here. And then here, here's a really important um, chart here. Um, it's how you would adapt and respond massage therapy application related to tissue healing. Um, so let's say somebody has an ankle sprain and you want to know, okay, now how do I, how do I adapt massage to that? Very useful. I would suggest you copy this off so that you've got it at, uh, easy to have or take a picture of it so that you can look at it on your device so that it's, hey, you have easy access to that. We're going to be talking about pain a lot and um, so there are also the YouTube videos that augment this. Research using massage as a pain management strategy is strong. If you're going to uh, have that, it's one of our main outcomes. It's usually what drives our category of care. Uh, and uh, you, you want to spend time slowing down and understanding this section in the textbook. So lots of definitions here. This is tissue healing here. Sometimes the figures are, uh, for one section, weave over into the other. Here's your different types of pain. Compare and contrast this information to what you hear in the videos I've identified for you. Um, slow down and look at this box on uh, pain classification. Um, use the content here to start to understand the experience of being in pain, not just the sensation. And then uh, what does happen physically when we are experiencing a pain sensation, whether it's productive or non-productive. Knowing the difference between somatic and visceral pain experiences. Uh, this is a little figure that has to do with uh, Malzac, Dr. Malzac and Wall's original gate control theory, which is, is still valid. It's a theory, but this, this, it's a good way of processing. Um, and uh, it is expanded now into the neural matrix. And there's been a lot of uh, understanding about the biopsychosocial, the context of pain, and moving away from the mechanisms of pain. This is where uh, chapter two in our fundamentals book, all of our ideas around the therapeutic alliance and therapeutic relationship and um, compassion come in. Now, this chart is important. Um, it is a referred pain, visceral, visceral referred pain um, patterns so that you can have an idea that maybe it isn't muscles, bones, and joints. Maybe it's organ related. And so, um, 
this is another figure where it might be worthwhile to um, take a picture of it or uh, there, you can also buy charts like this so that you can have this handy. Um, you know, a common um, spot that people complain about is between the shoulder blades. And um, that could also be referred pain from maybe an ulcer, something going on with the stomach. And then also liver and gallbladder. Uh, a lot of people have uh, this pain by the shoulder blade, by the scapula, and up into the neck. And it, it's not, it, it's, it's a referred pain pattern from problems with the liver and the gallbladder. So we need to be aware of this and, and refer. If this is a situation that you find and you're a little suspect about it, then you're gonna want to uh, have it checked out. And, and I can tell a personal story. My, my mother uh, has been, had had low back pain, this blue referred area for the kidney. Um, and she kept complaining about it, complaining about it. And uh, I, I had a mindset, I had biased myself that it was age related low back issues because it had been in the past until she got very, very ill. Um, and uh, she had a, a really bad kidney infection that um, if we would have caught it earlier, uh, it would have not been as serious as it turned out to be. So that's just one personal story about paying attention to this. And also uh, pulling out the specifics around cancer-related pain. It is, it is a different experience. Um, because, at, because of the uh, replacement of normal tissue with cancer-related tissue, it seems to function more like an acute pain process. And then there's also uh, pain from the uh, treatments and residual pain left over that uh, neuropathy from nerve, which is a nerve type pain uh, post chemotherapy can uh, be a persistent problem. Always stop and read your focus is on professionalism. This one happens to do happens to be about the joint commission and how they are incorporating non-pharmaceutical um, treatments, therapeutics in the treatment uh, with pain. So another little activity, always do these. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to spell it right, you don't have to, it can be messy, but it's a, a way of translating new short-term uh, information into your long-term memory. So these are um, different ways uh, that uh, pain can be treated and massage obviously is part of that. But we can also um, either incorporate uh, like hot and cold is part of the scope of practice of massage. Um, or we might recommend that somebody go to an acupuncturist. More information here about the opiate crisis and, and how uh, devastating that has become for people. So uh, this is uh, about the national pain strategy here. And go ahead and link right out so that you uh, can see uh, what's being done at a national and international level on this. Always review what you have learned. And then that takes us to our mechanisms of health and well being. And a lot of what we find in here is managing stress. And stress is what happens when we adapt, have to adapt. So stress is a demand 
to adapt. And when we have too much demand to adapt, um, then we start to deplete resources, resources that we need to restore ourselves and to heal. Massage can help, um, it, especially when it can support our rest and restore parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, which it, it can, and there's good research to back that up. So a lot of the activities here are to try to help you first understand your own stress coping mechanisms, and then from there understand others. This is a little exercise related to coping. Make sure you stop and take a look at that. Um, Hans Selye uh, was an original stress responser, he, a stretch researcher. He came up with the general adaptation uh, syndrome, and uh, it remains a valid way of seeing the progression of uh, non-managed stress. And then here's a little bit of how the physiology responds to it, because this stress is, if there's a, a demand to adapt, it means that there's something that could be seen as dangerous. And so we get into our sympathetic response, um, our uh, fight or flight response, and then the whole endocrine functions and, and uh, our muscles prepare to run. And so it can get quite uh, dicey in terms of how the whole body responds to that. Typically we would reverse that. Um, but if it's a chronic stress response, we kind of get stuck in it. And one of the areas that this will manifest is a, is a stress-related breathing. Um, and uh, throughout, uh, in the respiratory section in chapter 11, um, we talk about the importance of breathing and breathing pattern disorder, which is an underlying um, problem with inability for people to reverse the stress response. Their breathing is like they're running for their life. And in one of the videos I've put up for you is my teacher and mentor, Dr. Leon Chedow, who did a lot of work in this area, uh, especially on breathing pattern disorder. So here's resilience. How do we bounce? Um, there actually is a lot of resilience research right now. And you might wanna use uh, a uh, search um, platform like PubMed and see what you can find out about what's going on with research into resilience. And then as we come to the end of this chapter, um, life, the life cycle, uh, it, it's uh, very interesting on how we are uh, from the moment of conception all the way to the moment of passing, how our bodies respond and adapt and how that is a factor in how we would maybe uh, consider intensity or duration or the amount of pressure we're using during massage. Um, and this also fits into our, this is an adaptation of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, and what is that in relationship to our aging process? And this can also be part of how you consider your maturing process as a massage therapist, your, your babies right now, if you're going through massage therapy school. Um, and you'll, you'll graduate j just as you're leaving toddlerhood. <laughs> and so there's a lot of growth and maturity uh, yet to occur once you achieve entry level. So these are the overarching um, themes 
in the textbook. Um, I do recommend that you move out to these other sites on the web just quickly to see what resources are there for you in the future. Um, do wade through uh, as a group or um, by yourself, but use these critical thinking activities to help you solidify information and practice a way of thinking. And remember, um, on the Evolve site, under content updates, uh, there is uh, where you can link to, you can open up a document that uh, gives you my response to all of this. And I'm not saying it's the only response, but compare and contrast what you came up with, or your classmates came up as you discussed this. And it's starting to get you to a point where you are, are uh, using Medline Plus for uh, information and looking at what the research is for PubMed. And um, finally, um, we have our end of chapter questions and the call that the fact ones are more definition. You want to know why the wrong answers are wrong and the right answer is right. You, if there's a if if there's a word in here, you should know how to define it. Um, and then once you start to work with the language, and there's a lot of language here in this chapter, then we can start pulling the pieces together and understand more how this would relate to our uh, massage therapy practice as we get into these more complex questions. And then write your own questions. That's one of the best learning experiences you can have. So this is chapter two, um, a real big overarching chapter with lots of information that's going to be reinforced. Uh, and uh, I uh, really want you to explore those additional um, YouTube videos. They, I've carefully selected them. Um, it allows you to hear information from a different perspective. And uh, since you are actively engaged as your own teacher. Uh, I expect that you're accountable and responsible for that. So that's the end of this, and then we'll be exploring chapter three.